my heart, keep me singing. man and knew God's will more than any other man, especially the king who was very nearly a Roman Catholic when his head was chopped off. When the king was dead, he said, he didn't want to be king and became the Lord Protector instead. This was called a dictatorship because it's, it's place that is ruled by a dictator. We live in a democracy. Yes, very good. Edgar. During Cromwell's dictatorship, things got better for the common people. Universities and schools were built, and more people learnt to read and write. The English Navy defeated the Dutch and the Spanish and was feared abroad. I think he was a lonely man because people were scared of him and how he looked, and he didn't have any friends. He was very strict. Many of the things that Cromwell achieved are still with us today. The Irish people hated him. Yes, very well done. Very well done, everyone. That was very interesting. Who can tell me which king came to the throne after Cromwell died? Yes, Liz. Charles II. Charles II. Good. Now, during play, I'd like you all to think about what Edgar, Susan and Doug were saying about the difference between living in a dictatorship and how we live now. And we'll discuss that as our topic. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Hill. Okay, class, who can tell me why it's better to be alive now than during the English Civil War? Chris? Because we're not told what to do like they were. Good. Yes? Because no one gets their head cut off, do they? Yes. You can still get put in prison. But what kind of things can we do now in a democracy that we couldn't do then? Dean? We could watch videos. We can say how we feel and can vote for who we want. Yes, very good. Anything else? We can vote for a dictator. Yes, thank you, Dean. That's what Liz has just said. Things are run more efficiently. Because ah. if you don't like what anyone's doing, you can cut their heads off if they agree with you then. All those of you who think we live in a democracy, put your hands up. Thank you. 
Please, sir, can I go to the toilet? No. Scottish whiskey. Yeah. You should rinse it first. I'm going to hold a very important meeting tonight. Do you want to come to it? Where? Thank you. 
This won't take long. I called this meeting because of what's been happening at school. What's been happening at school? Quiet. Sure. Yes. You can either listen or go home. I'm listening. You can sit down if you want. I don't want to sit down. Look, it's my meeting. You either sit down or go home. I'll go home then. George, if you don't come, I'm telling Dad. Jackie. All right, you can stand. But this is serious. You've got to take this seriously, otherwise there's no point. And we might as well go home. Last week, Keith's brother Alan was picked on. And today, Dean's sweater was ripped. Android's tyres were let down. That was Gordon Hinks. It's going to get worse. Not just Gordon, but some of the others to look up to him. After he hit Alan, he got sent to Mr Mitchell with Gavin and John. John's even worse. Yeah, John's really horrible. And nothing happened. They weren't punished or anything. So if no one's getting punished, what's going to change anything? Nothing, kid. And they're making it awkward for us. We've all got the exam in January. I don't know about you, but I want to pass it. <coughs> My dad's going to give me a hundred pounds if I get into the grammar. Cool. I wish I had a dad like that. I wish I had a dad. I don't have an exam. So anyway, Gordon Hinks won't be there when I'm a fourth year. If we don't do anything about this year's Gordon Hinks, there'll be a Gordon Hinks every year, or someone the same as him. Last year in the fourth year is Brian Abbott. Abba went but to But if they know they can't get away with it... I want to go home now. Shut up, Jackie. You shut up. Sit down. You can't make me. Anyway, it's getting dark. So are you afraid of the dark? No, you are, though. Shut up, both of you. So, first, are we agreed we're not happy with the way things are? You mean Gordon Hinks? Gordon Hinks, John Frewer. I'm not happy anyway. Nor me. Second, if we're not happy with the way things are, do we want to do something about it? Bash him up. No, not bash him up. What then? Something else. Well, what? We form a police force. <laughs> Observing, investigating, interpreting, hypothesizing, applying. Hypothesizing, what's that? What about uniforms? No uniforms, plain clothes, like the CID, with real identity cards. But I suppose we could wear short raincoats. Who'd be in charge? I would, it's my idea. I suppose we could have ranks, and anyone could be promoted. I'd be a detective inspector, and if you wanted, you could be a sergeant. What about girls? Oh, shut up, Jackie. We'll all meet here Saturday and clear the rooms out. We'll need a room to beat prisoners up in. We can use any room for that. I can't Saturday. Saturday is my mum's wedding anniversary. Do you think the real police stop arresting people because it's their mum's wedding anniversary? We're not the real police, though. We have to believe we are. Then they will. We're either a real police force or we're not. Yeah, so we're a team. Squad. A squad, then.
squadron. When we're here, we should have coffee and sandwiches. Have a word with Jackie. We'll need some money. Most of what we want, we can pick up for home. But for anything else, we should pay subs. 75p each week. Who's going to look after it? Matthew. He's not going to be too overworked. Not yet, as a lab boy. He can double up as a squad accountant. He's any good? Great. You sign your name under the photo. Where's mine? Oh, great, thanks a lot. Give the others this. I thought she'd do more squeaking in an album. Yeah, pity about the pink card though. words. Police words. If we're to be police, we've got to talk like them. Why? Why do we need a code of practice? It's our law. Yeah, but we're the police. I can't read your writing anyway. If we're dishonest or corrupt, then the other children's strongest reason for being honest is gone. We have to be an example of the laws we're going to enforce. The policeman is the state-made flesh. In his behaviour, he demonstrates the true values of his society. His, his honesty, fairness and good sense are an index of civilization. What are you on about? Because then we'll think like them. How do we know when we think like them? Because we won't be pretending like we are now. We'll be them. But we're them already. Shut up. I'll test you on them during the week. What, learn all of them? Blag, bum, Erna, Lispy. What's so Freddy? what it is next to it. Freddy, Fraser, Razor. Why don't you just say Razor? Why do you have to say Razor anyway? I think you've all done a good job in getting this place sorted out, especially WPC Little for the warrant cards. Well done. What now? You bring in Gordon Hinks and John Freer for questioning with regard to threatening and intimidating behaviour. Did you get those? What if Mr. Mitchell or any of the other teachers find out? We're going to get in trouble. Just tell them we're playing. Gordon Henry Hinks, for being charged with threatening and intimidating behaviour towards pupils of Great Middleton School and one count of criminal damage. In that, on or around the 27th of April, you did willfully, lewdly, openly and obscenely let the air out of tyres of three cycles chained to the railings opposite the PTA hut. Well? I saw him. No, you didn't, liar. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Yes, he did. You can't keep me here. I want to go. Oh, pen and paper. What's that for? I'm going to make a statement. Oh, what? You write down exactly what happened, you sign your name at the bottom, then you can go home. You can't make me do anything. I can tell Mr Mitchell about you, and you, and all of you. That's right, Gordon. You're going to tell Mr Mitchell everything. But first we need a statement. Can't make me do anything. That's up to you, Gordon. We've got all night. Two ways you can play it, Gordon. There's the easy way, and there's a the hard way. Either way, we're going to get what we want. 
Alright, think about it. Organise them, get them to write something down about their friends. Let's start a filing system. We're not going to wait here all night. My dinner's going to get cold. Give them another ten minutes. Then what? Better let me go now. It's all I can do to stop Dougie and George from coming in here and giving you a good bashing. The thing is, Gordon, there's two of them and only one of me. And I'm not sure I'll be able to hold them back. I'd say the sooner you do that statement and get out of here, the safer you'll be. I'm not writing anything. Little Jackie says you stole a pair of her gloves yesterday afternoon. Huh? She says she and a friend of hers saw you. I never did that. Or you don't want one? It's peanut butter. Well, that's what she says, and her friend. If they were to go to Mr Mitchell, well, it's your word against theirs. And what with your record? You'd be a thief, Gordon. What would your dad say? The truth is, I'm not really interested in the gloves. Just the tyres and that broken window in the boiler room, the one you smashed last weekend. You incredible liar! Ooh. That's what we want, Gordon. Your signed confession to the tyres and breaking that window. That should be enough. The thing is, we can't settle for anything less. I didn't do any of them! Well, let's say these two will make up for the ones you did do. I think they call that rough justice. You wait if I tell my dad. He'll go mad at you. Your statement, please. Kill me. What if he doesn't write it? If he tells his dad? He won't. I know, but what if he does? You haven't signed it yet, have you? Can I go now? In a bit, Gordon. something for our records. Some insurance that you don't go telling any porkies. What's that? Porky pies, lies. It's cockney slang. Didn't you know? Let me go. I, I promise I won't tell anyone. We need a big smile, Gordon. Laugh. You're in the Rudy Club now. Laugh. Have you told me all this? I couldn't sleep, sir. <clears throat> Someone will have to pay for the window. Yes, sir. What you've admitted to are very serious things. Yes, sir. But I want you to know that I think it took a lot of courage to come and see me. Thank you, sir. If we can get the window fixed, we'll say no more about it, all right? Thank you, sir.
Inspector Reese. Flying squad. Go on, get out of it. That's all I need. Junior filth. things. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. And I don't want to see either of you back here again this term, all right? Yes, sir. Now, back to your classes. I think you think this school needs a Catholic priest. What are we going to do now? Everyone's respecting the rule. There's no one left to arrest. Our examples wrapped up. Not like the real police, is it? We could train. It'd be a shame to hang up the wall, cards. I think you better go back inside and say you're sorry. No way. Don't see how there's a way around it. All right, can't we do some kind of deal? What do you have in mind? I don't mind you put them there. Receiving stolen goods, that is. I didn't steal anything. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to accompany me to the station. Get up. Get up. Be a sign of good faith on your part if you were to report voluntarily. Fort where? Palace Road Central, straight after school. My nan's collecting me. All right, then. Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. You be there. in a public place, Gov. People like you make me sick.
not going to show up. We'll get him off to school. That's not the point. What's the point? We can't even let one person go because it undermines my authority. Well, he hasn't turned up. We'll have to make an example of him. How? I'll think of something. We'd better get to school. Can I phone my dad? He's just come out of hospital after having one of his lungs out. Yes, help yourself. I can pay. That's all right. Jackie? Yeah. It's D.I. Reese. Edgar. How's the tonsils? Good? Great. Listen, what have we got on Keith Penn? Yeah, let's have a look. Penn, Keith Andrew, 102 Glossop Road. Great, thanks, bye. You can leave your bike here. What are we doing? We're doing a dawn raid. What about Keith's mum? She left for work half an hour ago. Works in London. He'll be on his own. You can't raid a house. It's against the law. The proper law. We'll all get locked up. I'm not coming. Yes, you are. Come if you told me. That's why we didn't. All right, you go that way. I get him. What are you doing? Shut it, Roy. Get off! Andrew Penn. You're to be charged with various things, as yet undecided. You have the right to remain silent in the sense that it is not an offence to refuse to answer questions. But if you decide to exercise this right, you'll be assumed to be guilty. Are these yours? These two books were stolen from the bookshop yesterday found them under the bed. You liar! Dust them down and see what you can find. Right. How? You're the lab where you figure it out. Right, Pen. let's go.
Where are you taking me now? The law demands a bit of penal servitude. But I haven't been tried. You tried some. You just didn't get away with it. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Snout. Trials. There's an idea. What's the point, Gov? I mean, we know they're guilty. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David Turner. I can see you making a paper dart. Unfold the paper. Anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years. Reese, stand up. Are you tired? No, sir. Then don't act tired, not in my class. How old was David when he became king of Israel? Yeah? 40, I think. Forty, you think. I think thirty. Come here. You're an idiot, aren't you? An idiot, sir. Yeah. Stand over there. Face against the wall. And don't turn round. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. Don't fiddle with your pencil case. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. All right. Break time. Stand up. Put your chairs into your tables quietly and leave quietly.
You have to arrest Scratch. He's a bad influence. Mum, yeah, I've got a tummy ache, and Miss Ivory says I should go home. Okay. Right, bye. Come on, now, go come and sit over here till your mum comes. There, you'll be all right. Yeah, okay. What are you doing here on your own? Where are your parents? I don't know. Well, get in. I'll take you home. Your parents will be worried sick. Now, where do you live? Palace Road. Uh, Disco? Yeah, it's all right. Did you? Oh, it's, it's uh, pretty fair, really. Do you lot, do a lot of dancing? Mm, quite a lot. Do you enjoy that? It's okay, not really. Not really, no. Mum makes me go, though. Go very well, she does it make you. Pardon? What does it make you go? Mum makes me go dancing. Oh, your yeah, mother. Mm. Mother enjoys dancing. It's usually the women who enjoy the dancing. My wife used to enjoy the dancing. Here, please. Where? On the left.
here. Will you see me in, please, Mr. Richardson? Get out. Okay. Go to the gate. Move. Go on.
get us a tea, George. Better get some ready for the others. Right, I. Well, Edgar, this isn't a game. My dad's got a jacket like that. Not as old as yours. He'd have thrown it out or given it to Oxfam. I won't tell your father about this. Why are you doing this? You're going to be tried, Jim. Tried? Tried for what? Take the handcuffs off, or loosen them. Not likely. You're bigger than us. <laughs> Read the charge. James Allen Aitchison, you have been charged with the willful corruption of minors. How do you plead? Members of the jury, it is the prosecution's aim to prove beyond any, re any reasonable doubt that the defendant, James Allen Aitchison, a teacher at Great Middleton School, is guilty of the most serious of crimes. The crime of being a bad example. How do you propose to prove this? A secret ballot taken among the jurors. I would like the jury to be released into a private room. Will the usher direct the jury from the court? Yes, Your Honour. a warrant demanding the imprisonment of Mr. Aitchison upon the charge of corruption of minors. It will require all your signatures. Sign it. Sign it. No. Sign it. What are you going to do to him? All we want to do is teach him a lesson. We'll be home in an hour. Sign it. I won't. He's not a bad teacher. So, what have you learnt from him? Sign it. Edgar, I can't. Is he guilty or not guilty? He's a teacher. Is he guilty? Yes. Sign it.
James Allen Aitchison, you have been found guilty of corruption against the children of Great Middleton School, by whose authority this court does sit in judgment upon you. Do you have anything to say? We cannot hear. The court will now pronounce the sentence. Detective Inspector Rees. As the arresting officer and counsel for both the prosecution and defence, and therefore as elected official of this court, there can only be one fit and proper punishment. It is the punishment of this court that henceforward the pupils of Great Middleton shall know that you are a bad example. They shall know who you are. Take the prisoner away, this court is dismissed. You're weak. You're sloppy. You're a bad example. Listen to me, Edgar. I don't like teaching. I can't cope. Can't cope with it at all. Makes me sick. Surely I have the right to fail, don't I? You smell. The others think I set you free yesterday, but I don't think you're ready yet. I'll have to tell the police, Edgar. No, you won't. Because you're a dirty old man. This is Detective Sergeant Whitten and Detective Constable Hudson. And they will be coming round to each class during today and tomorrow to ask you some questions. Between now and when you see Detective Sergeant Whitten and Detective Constable Hudson, I'd like you all to think about when you last saw Mr. Atchison. Now, some of you would have seen him at last Friday's disco. So I want you to think about that. Understood? to let 
let him go on Saturday night. It doesn't matter what I said now, does it? We'll all be arrested for murder. We didn't kill him. You did. I didn't kill him. He killed himself. But we're all involved. All of us. I'll be put in prison. You should give yourself up, Edgar. Tell them what happened. It'd be better if you give yourself up. It wouldn't be any better for you. They'll put us all in prison. Forever. It was your idea. Your accessories. We're all accessories. That means we're all as guilty as each other. Imagine being a place like that. Forever. There's people in prison who do things to you. Especially young people like us. Rude things. They play with you. I'm only 11. I know. I'm sorry. Sorry won't make him alive again. But we don't have to go to prison. How? Because we don't. Not if you don't say a word and leave everything to me. But I won't say anything. I won't. What are you going to do? We'll need to clear out any paperwork. We can leave the other stuff. What are these doing here, Edgar? Who gave them to him? I did. You killed him. We killed him. You took the pictures. Thanks. So, we won't keep you long. We don't want to keep you from your lessons. How many of you were at the disco? Thank you. How many of you saw Mr. Acheson at the disco? Thank you. How many of you saw Mr. Acheson leaving the disco? Did any of you talk to Mr. Acheson while you were at the disco? And I went in and found him, and he was just hanging there from the ceiling, from the roof. When was this, Edgar? Last night after school. And you didn't tell anyone? I was too scared. Not even your father, your mother? No. Do you know where this old public house is, the address? Yes. What's the address? 17 Palace Road. Do you want some water? <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Do you go to this public house a lot? Sometimes. Once a week or more than once a week? Once a week, usually on Sunday. I'm studying most of the time because of the 11 plus next week. Otherwise, I go there more than once a week. And last night when you were there, you were on your own? Yes. OK. And you were just playing by yourself? Yes. Can I ask you what you were playing? The police. You want to be a policeman when you grow up, do you? I think you'd probably make a good policeman. I pretended the pub was Scotland Yard. That's about right. <laughs> but you were on your own when you discovered Mr. Acheson. Is that right? Yes. Now, I'm not blaming you or saying anything, all right? But I think... If I found someone, like you found Mr. Atchison, I think I would have gone straight to the police or home to tell my father. Now, why didn't you tell anyone, Edgar? I was scared. I can understand that. But why were you too scared to tell anyone? I don't know. Take your time. 
Why didn't you tell anyone? Why didn't you tell anyone, Edgar? He touched me during the disco. Mr. Atchison touched you? What do you mean? He was being rude. Where did he touch you? My tail. He showed me pictures of tails. I said I'd tell Mr. Mitchell. He said I was to meet him on Sunday at the public house. He said he knew I went there. He said he'd been watching me. That's why I went home early from the disco. Because he was always watching me. Have some more water. Edgar, what you're saying is very serious. He said he might bring another man who wanted to meet me as well. Do you remember this other man's name? He didn't say it. Did you turn up on Sunday? I was too scared. Why did you go back there yesterday after school? I keep some things there, old chairs and things. Sometimes a gang steals them and I wanted to see if they were still there. Edgar? Yes, sir. Everything's going to be all right. Thank you, sir. few days, I'd say, Gov. Stiffer than a dick in a brothel. Filthy bastard. Bloody teacher as well. See the cuff marks on the wrist? You think it was him and this other fella playing a few games, eh? Hello. Could be. Mm. School teacher, kids, photos. I think we'll end up putting this one down to conscience. Gets them all in the end, one way or another. I'm going to get back. Yeah, Gov, who was it who said conscience is the police force within us all? That'd be Chief Constable Max Benish. And he should know, Dickie. He's doing three for conspiracy. sought the Lord's guidance night and day in this matter. It is not idly done, but this nation will be justly governed. I will give this nation back its self-respect. We will walk in this world with our heads held high. I will liberate man's souls from the darkness of ignorance. I will build schools and universities for all. This will become the golden age of learning. I will bring the law within the reach of every common man. There'll be work and bread for all. This nation 
will prosper because it is a godly nation and because we walk hand in hand with the Lord. I swear by the name of the living God that I will see this nation properly governed if I have to do it myself. Dear God, give me the strength to do it. Hello.